Hey everyone, I am your host, Ray Ireland, and you are listening to the Soul Align Podcast, where we help high achieving leaders and driven visionaries do what you love and live your purpose now because the world needs you. We are here with an amazing, amazing strategist and coach, Sarah Koss, and she's going to be talking about Instagram strategy for 2020. Um, and we're going to be diving into how to create an engaged, loyal Instagram audience and one that will also pay you. How about that? <laughs> how do we do that? We're going to find out. <laughs> so, um, Sarah is an Instagram strategist for six figure leaders, coaches, and entrepreneurs who are interested in leveraging the platform for lead generation and their ideal clients. So she helps them create visibility in their niche and by doing that, also creating a global impact. So this is gonna be a super cool episode. I'm just so happy that you're here with us. Thanks so much for joining, Sarah. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to meet your audience and get some value today. Um, do you want me to tell me a little bit about myself? Please. Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did you get into this? What's your journey been? So I started actually, I was like traveling the world and then I moved to Bali and I started a swimwear company and I wanted to sell it. Um, I had a Shopify store and I was, Oh, you know, I should do this Instagram thing. Let me figure this out. And I mean, we felt flailed every way you possibly could. Um, you know, we were sending so much product to influencers. Some of them would convert and like some of them wouldn't. And the ones with the smaller accounts would convert than the ones with the bigger accounts. So it was like really interesting seeing like the different things it, from a product retail based kind of business. And then my boyfriend and I built a Instagram bot, which would engage. So we spent like two years, like a year actually traveling and like figuring out what's, what's creating the movement in the accounts. And then I, we got so wrapped into that and like really um, like learning so much in the back end of what happens with accounts on Instagram that you know, people started paying me to run it for them on their accounts. And that's really where I think is the, the difference between what I do and maybe another strategist. It's more about like, I have this in-depth knowledge about how it actually, how it works and what's creating that movement. So that's how I started my own business, which is Instagram marketing, uh, mostly for entrepreneurs and personal brands. And, you know, a lot of the information comes from, you know, I used to work on Wall Street. So learning and seeing how things and markets move and you know, what causes these, these different, you know, people to engage or not engage. So yeah, that's kind of like a brief history of where I come from and where my expertise comes from. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Super cool. I, I love that. And I think there's so much knowledge that you have. So I'm like, okay, I want to pull out all the nuggets for everyone. <laughs> um, and because I know you, you really do support people on a very deep level. And so I think that sort of support on Instagram, around being real and using strategies like vulnerability and like actually connecting and then also bring tying in these like really practical strategies um, are really awesome for everyone to know anyone that is a small business or entrepreneur and anyone that has that personal brand or is just trying to get a message out there yeah um, so can you kind of share a little bit around your perspective on vi like becoming viral or doing a viral post? Yeah. We're already talking a little bit about that. And yeah, what, what, what have you seen that works? What doesn't? Yeah, I think the fastest way you see people doing it right now, um, which is basically playing off the algorithm, right? The algorithm wants to you to create MSI, which is meaningful social interaction. Um, but a lot of people, like how many people are sharing it, how many people are liking it and commenting. So you see a lot of posts now that are really like, you know, like this, this quote card, or I call them quote cards, or like an infographic that's engaging, that speaks to a bigger audience, um, that's going to create, that the algorithm is going to take that and think of it as a high, high engaging post. Um, so there's that shift. A lot of my clients don't like that because it's kind of just playing a strategy based on the algorithm where it is today. So if the algorithm changes, um, all that MSI you're paying, all that engagement is kind of going to go away and your account's going to again fall down. This is why like it's not important as much to chase trends on Instagram. Uh, if you, if you just want to go viral, like that's, that's one way to do it, but it's better to create a connection, a deeper connection with people and provide that value with them than just chasing the next trend on IG. It's, that gets tiring, it gets old. And yeah, that's kind of what I, the work that I do with people. But 
Um, what does happen, I see happen with people who do go viral, their next post tends to do really poorly because it didn't en engage as many people. It didn't get as much interaction. Mm -hmm. So you have to like decide what, what kind of account you want. <laughs> I don't think it's the best strategy for a personal brand um, to do that, kind of like throwing up all these quote cards. It does work. And a lot of people will tell you to do it. Um, but I think the people that are saying that have created two separate accounts. So they have their personal brand and then they have this like repost is what I call it, a repost account where they funnel traffic between them. Um, and I think that's cool, but like I personally wouldn't want to fill my own feed with that kind of stuff just because it's going to get engagement from the algorithm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you suggest for someone that is like building their personal brand and, and wanting to create something that is maybe a little bit more, um, authentic and not just like cookie cutter. Yeah, I, I think one of the most important things is Insta stories and showing up face to face to cam because that's the fastest way to 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 connect with people, right? In video, um, and you know, picking something specific. I see a lot of people who do a lot of great things and they they want to break out of their niche before they've even conquered their niche, and that really slows the growth of an account down on Instagram. If Instagram knows that you are for this these kinds of people and you you do this specific thing, getting the algorithm to know that by the people you engage with, by the content you put out, by the hashtags you use, by the words in your bio, it's gonna show you to more people that are in that niche. And since you're staying on brand all the time, those people are gonna engage with that content. So that's gonna create engagement and the algorithm is gonna keep pushing your content to those specific people, which is gonna create this cycle of engagement as opposed to you posting about 20 different things and Instagram algorithm not knowing even who to show your stuff to, uh, and it's gonna probably show it to the wrong people. So uh, you really wanna stay in your lane, and I know everyone says that in the coaching niche, but like this is from the algorithm, it's really, really important. Um, and, and that's how you get people, you get to be known for one specific thing, and creating value for them on the actual page, connecting with them regularly, being consistent. It's so important to be consistent on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I want to like dive into a little bit more about how do you create value on an Instagram page? What would be some ways that you've seen help and work? Yeah. So what I really love is like, I work with clients on storytelling. Like, how can you get me? Like, I feel like the thing that's different between Facebook and Instagram is in Facebook, you can write a post. that's just like super vague and like, like doesn't really like have any like grounding factor to it. Like you don't know when this person was or where they were when they wrote this. Um, and those things don't really work as well on Instagram. People want to hear the story. They, even if it's your client's story, if it's your story, they want to feel uh, the energy behind you and showing them things through storytelling, but also like an easy way to do it is people like love to hear information given to them. And like, here's the fastest way. Here's five things like breaking things down into like your educational content into something that's digestible and to the point and gives them entertainment as well. So like some kind of content that educates them, but not in a boring way. It doesn't have to be, here's my five you know, you can make it fun and something that they want to learn from. Uh, and doing that consistently, it, it's going to draw the right people to you. They see you're providing value. But, you know, when it comes to sales, like I see a lot of people do this and they never ask for the sale after. So consistently asking for the sale and showing people that you're a business is, is just as important as providing value. I don't think those two things should be separated um, because then you get into this weird place of like, oh, is this just an inspo account? And you don't want to be branded as that. Mm -hmm. And what, what would you say is the best way to like ask for the sale? The best call to action or like how to ask? Yeah. Yeah. How do you ask? Like, do you do it in a post? Do you do it in a story? Do you do it in a message? Um, my favorite is a combo. Like, you know, throw the post down there with a call to action. Like, let's say it's book a call with me. I want you to go in the stories that day because people are, who see that call to action in the post, the first thing they do is they go check the stories. So having something again in the story about those calls, like, hey, on this call, we're going to get you this result. I'm going to show you exactly what's missing on your Instagram. And then um, saying, so if you want a book, send me a DM. A DM works great like uh, to get people. You don't have to have a, a website to do this. You just have a booking link and you can send it either in the DMs or in your link in bio. But reiterating what you said in the post and doing it 
with your face to the camera because people want to see that you are behind the thing you're selling. So I feel like a lot of people post a call to action and they like sit back and like just wait when really like this is the, this is where you want to lean in and, and show your show that you completely back what you're saying and why they should care. It's all about them at this point, even with the stories, why should they care? What do they get from it? And like make that clear, be really clear. And, um, and, and, you know, one call to action, let's say you have those like five calls you're doing, which I'm actually doing right now in my stories, like just doing it once and dropping it, it's not enough. Like you can go ahead and continually prompt your audience to take action. So it's not just like aggressive selling, it's like guiding them through a journey and letting them know like, hey, if you DM me, this is what you're going to get walking them through the process, like whatever it is, even if it's a freebie, like showing them a bit of the freebie, like I call them walkthroughs. People love to see and be shown things as opposed to just click the link in my bio, like keep, like go deeper with them. They want that. They appreciate it. I love that. And it is something that's super unique to Instagram that you have like all these abilities to like message, to do video, to like hit kind of multiple yeah, and you have group chats, you have voice demos, video DMs. Like, there's so much you can do to play. And, like, the polls, I love, like, all the features. And those are all features Instagram rolled out for businesses. So they're there for a reason, and, and that's why brands and businesses love Instagram. Why do you think they all do Instagram? Not all of them do Facebook. Not all of them do YouTube. But most big brands and businesses do put a lot into their Instagram. Yeah, that totally makes sense. What would be like, because the Instagram world, it's like, there's so much that you could do, but also it's like really simple, but what would be some things that you would tell someone not to do? Um, okay. Not to do, hmm. don't not have a call to action in your bio. Mm. Don't be vague in your bio. Don't list out that you're a Virgo and you have five kids, whatever. I mean, you can, but like, if you're a business lead with the value that you provide people with, um, don't post and ghost. Instagram likes to see people on their app. When you post, engage with the people that respond to you. Don't not reply to the comments on your page. Don't, um, what else can I say? Don't, don't like leave people hanging in your DMs. If people take the time to respond to you and all you can do is like their, their DM, like that's, that's not creating a connection with people. Like take the time and the courtesy to respond to the people that have responded to your stories. Um, and create connections with people. Like this is what it's really about. And that's really what's going to move, not just like creating a connection with your audience, but also from an algorithm perspective, which is always to me secondary, but they both work together. Actually, like your first duty is to Instagram. This is their per platform. And I know I just said the opposite, but then your audience and then you, but what I mean is like, you got to play with by, within their rules. Um, to get ahead and 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 please stop thinking it's your audience's fault or the algorithm hates you like all this mentality is really detrimental to you as a brand but also that energy feeds into how you show up so a lot of people will be like oh the algorithm hates me or my audience doesn't engage like if someone doesn't engage with your one post dude tomorrow's a new day like let it go and stop like how do you actually interact with people like how are you perceiving your own audience like do you care for them what, what like you know a lot of people are like they're inviting people to their house to their instagram and then they're just not even engaging them they're just like they're not talking to them like you would never do that at home right so totally. so think about how you treat people on, on the platform and is that the kind of energy that you would want to be treated with mm -hmm. yeah it was funny like uh i think a few weeks ago, you know, I was mess, I messaged someone that was new to my page and they replied back, are you a robot? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not. But like, this is why we're connecting is to yeah. like, actually like, remember the reason why we have technology in the first place. It's not to just put robots and have robots run our business. Like maybe in the future, <laughs> we'll just sit back. Okay. Do your thing. But like, no, this is like, there's still humans on Instagram. And so to be able to connect with people and to really utilize that source of connection, you know, and like it, first and foremost, it's like that heart connection, let alone like, okay, now you can also grow your business. How cool yeah. is that? Yeah. And like what you just said, like connecting with people, a lot of people that I, I see the people who, you know, are really frustrated and I wish I could help them all. But I ask them like, do you engage with your audience? They're like, no. 
And it's almost like they feel like above it or something. Um, I don't want to go too deep into what not to do, but that mentality is it's, it's, it's also really painful for you if you're just like looking at likes and like looking at engagement from that perspective, as opposed to like, oh, these people are really connecting with what I'm doing. And how will you know what they want if you don't ask them? How will you know where they're at if you're not creating that conversation with them in your stories, right? So like the best thing about stories is it's like a two-way conversation, a one, a one to many almost. Like it's not just a monologue. It's like, hey, do you like that? Do you want that? You know, and they give you feedback throughout the journey, which I don't know any other platform that does that. And it's just, to me, it's like amazing. <laughs> Super cool. And I yeah. hear what you're saying is like, you know, if you want a loyal Instagram audience, then you have to be loyal yourself, like show yeah. up and yes, be there. That's literally my email signature, like keep showing up and showing up for them. And you know, one of the things I tell my clients is just record. Like if you get stuck, like go play and record because a lot of it's just like you're sitting in your head and you need to just do a small action to get out of that and show up for people because people love the people that show up consistently over time. That doesn't mean you have to show up every day. That's frequency. That's different. So I think being consistent, like what am I committing? What can I commit to from now till December 31st? Like, is it one post a week? That's fine. But like, that's, I'm not going to break that promise. Mm -hmm. um, is it every day my Insta story is fine, but like, don't, don't like take hiatuses and <laughs> come show up for like on vacation only and then disappear for four months. Like these kinds of things that doesn't make your audience feel safe with you. Mm, totally. So what would you say would be like the most ideal frequency? Oh, I don't, I don't think there is like, I mean, it depends. Honestly, it's what you can commit to and promise to do. I think like, for example, if you're posting pictures of yourself all the time, right? Do you think you, like, I don't think you need to be posting four pictures of yourself a day. So depending on what kind of feed you have, what your audience, who your audience is, like what kind of account you are. So like mindset, mindset posts is more frequently. I feel like the mindset niche and they'll do like a lot of quote cards and stuff like that. So I personally, I always ask my clients, what are you going to commit to in my containers? And like, that's, that's the, the bottom line. Some of them post once a week, some of them post five times, depending on them. But for me, it's more important that they do that thing consistently and show up in their stories and create value. Like there's so much more than just like post, oh, I have to post. You know what I mean? Like it's so much deeper than that to me than, than that. Because you can put one great post to me is better than five crappy, like, quantity over quality now and when you say like a good quote uh or a good post like what consists of that and like can you speak into like how to really create those engaging posts because there's like there's a few pieces you know you like you're vulnerable and stuff like that but what like really from maybe some of the posts that you've done that have been like getting a lot of good hits and also continue to bring you engagement and client leads like yeah. what are qualities in that kind of post so ones that I see for me working is like when I do say things that like you like usually I don't talk about being Persian on my Instagram and the second that I did I told a story about it that post went viral um and it's because I was opening up a part of myself sharing with my audience but most of my stories that I that I call like my valuable like I think storytelling is your origin stories where you come from why you do what you do those things are the things that really connect us with people um, so knowing what your origin stories are sharing those and it doesn't have to be point <laughs> the day I was born to the day I died but making taking the parts that are connecting you to where your ideal client is mm. So where are they at and how does this, this story speak to the transformation they want to create? Mm -hmm. That's one. Um, again, it's about them, right? I see a lot of people like, will be like, oh, my new podcast episode is out, but it doesn't like say why they should care about this podcast. What's the episode about? Like, what is it? Like, where, why, where am I supposed to connect with that? I mean, I, I, great that you're celebrating yourself, but like, if you want people to be enrolled into the things that you're doing, you got to make it about them. So even if you are telling stories of yourself, how is that like, it, you know, it, even if you do write it with the eyes in it, it can still connect with people. So that's kind of like, am, is, am I writing this for someone or am I writing this for myself? Um, so I'll usually start that and then like look through because I'm used to doing it now to, to, for my audience. But one of the first things I always work on with my clients in my container is like, 
the origin stories, what makes them who they really are. Uh, and there's always something, it's some gold in there. It's like, it's like going like on an archaeology dig and like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And it, it feels like, you know, the more that you can just show who you are, then the, the easier it'll be for people to feel that safety. I like how you said that, like the safety, because like, it's true. Like if someone is just showing part of their life and then they're gone, it's like that boyfriend that you date and then he like calls you once you go on an amazing day it's so great and then he like doesn't call you for like a month and then he calls you on friday he's like ready for our second date you're like uh what <laughs> no <laughs> totally yeah like i feel like you want to create like, this is what i mean by instagram is so different because you there are people excuse me who are using it to show different parts of themselves so that doesn't mean i'm going to talk about everything under the sun everything there has to be a red thread under like an umbrella message that is yours for example mine is visibility being seen right because like and i talk about this story about when i couldn't didn't speak when i was a child and i went mute all of these stories kind of connect instagram marketing again helping people be visible connect with their ideal clients all of these go together there's a red thread i'm not just talking about everything under the sun there is an essence to it that that speaks to the mission that i'm on and wh what i'm here to do <clears throat> and just from your perspective and like from the growth that you've seen in your own instagram and your clients like is this really what do you think is going to happen with instagram in the years coming and like how can we prepare to like keep, continue to utilize it for global change and impact yeah. So for me, I see a lot of people get caught up in the number of followers and thank God since like last year, it's gotten, it's gotten a lot better. People are noticing how important engagement is actually, because if you're in it for right now only, you're going to care about followers. Your podcast coach is going to tell you to go buy followers. And I've had people come to me, their podcast coach told them to buy followers and their engagement sunk. And now they're like trying to clean their accounts. And that's, these are the things that there's our short term gains that people are looking at shiny objects that aren't really going to help you. You want to be building a, a brand that's going to stay with you so that no matter how you pivot, it's going to be there. The people are there and they're like enrolled in you as a brand. So they're always going to buy your stuff. You're creating this, this loyal base. And I think if you focus on that, yeah, your growth might be slower, but you're building something that has such a strong foundation that it's going to stand through through time and it's going to have create longevity so those are kind of the people that i really want to work with yeah, yeah <laughs> and i think it will always be like it's not going to go anywhere if you if you really want to know but again you should be always building that email list like your goal on instagram is to create something where you're leading people through a journey and leading them eventually off the app to connect with you like that's something i also see a lot of people not doing mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I love that because it's like, yeah, now's the best time to see that like the world can shift on a dime and who are you being in your business? What is your business to all these other people? Like, are you really providing value or not? And really just through being you and then whatever your business is, that can continue to be like an essence uh, arm off of you but yeah it's a part of you it's an extension of you your brand your business should be an extension of you like mm. so your energy is in these things and that's like what you're putting into the into the <laughs> instagram <laughs> the algorithms <laughs> charging you with your energy i love that so much well is there any last thing that you would like to share with the viewers um, I can throw you guys my freebie if you want, um, the swipe, how to get the swipe up with under 10 K followers and I'll send that to Ray so you guys can all get it. And I highly recommend using it. It does. It's insane. I got like 90 clicks from one story out of 345 viewers. So that's a huge, that's a huge number. So I really recommend using that, um, as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing, bringing all your expertise. And thank you to everyone that is watching the video and checking this out. Please subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. And if you want to check out more videos, you can go ahead and just tap the screen right there. We'll see y'all next time. Bye.